Well, China's National Health Commission has announced today that the death toll from the deadly coronavirus has risen to 1,868 people. Of the 98 new deaths, 93 were reported in the Hubei province. Joining us live now is Stephen Jiang from Beijing. Stephen, appreciate your time. Has it now been confirmed that one of Wuhan's highest ranking doctors is actually one of those who has died? What's the latest there? Well, we are still trying to seek official confirmation. That was reported by state media, but the hospital itself has not confirmed his death. But, you know, it's not surprising that medical workers have borne the brunt of this uh, virus outbreak. We have already heard officials say more than 1,700 medical workers uh, infected with this virus, uh, with many of them actually uh, perished. But then this number could be even higher as this outbreak shows no sign of abating, especially at the uh, epicenter. Now, what we are seeing right now uh, across the country, not just at the epicenter is half of the country's 1.4 billion population now under some form of lockdowns or travel restrictions. That is just a staggering number. At the epicenter now in Wuhan, the provincial capital, as well as a growing number of cities, people are basically confined to their homes 24-7. Officials say uh, other than people seeking medical attention or working in government containment efforts, people are just simply not allowed out at all. Uh, daily necessity items, including food, will be, will be delivered to them by local officials. So that is just very draconian measures at the epicenter. But it's strikingly, actually, across the country, in other cities, including here in Beijing, a city of more than 20 million people that recorded fewer than 400 cases. P people are also living under very uh, strict conditions as well. For example, almost all residential compounds are now uh, res restricting access to residents only. Not only you need to have a key or key card, you need to have a special permit and that is uh, being issued to each family. Usually you get two, you are not supposed to lend them out. And when I drive into the compound, you not only have your temperature checked, you are required to wear a mask even inside your car. So these are very, very drastic and increasingly draconian measures being put in place across the nation, even at a time they were encouraging people outside of the epicenter to return to work. But of course, this kind of measure is making that a very much challenging, if not outright impossible, Ashley. We've also seen these reports that police in Wuhan are preparing to begin house-to-house -house checks for all 9 million residents in that city. So you're right. I mean, these measures really are stepping up. As a journalist working there, Stephen, how hard is it to get data confirmed because there seems to be a real problem uh, around the world is that the, the data flowing through from China seems to be murky and, and unreliable sometimes. That's right. That's always a concern. That, of course, is a uh, you know trustworthy issue with the uh, government sources. But unfortunately, for most people, including I think U.S. CDC, they were just speaking about this issue a, a few days ago. The Chinese government, the Chinese CDC, uh, seems to be only official source that you could get data on confirmed cases and death toll uh, as of now. But of course, even the Chinese government has revised their uh, uh, criteria in terms of how they report these cases. Remember a few days ago we had a huge spike in the numbers because now at least at the epicenter they're not only con uh, including people who have tested positive for this virus but also people displaying symptoms but not yet tested positive or not yet go through the tests for this virus so things are still evolving very fast but the 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 the, uh, the reality right now is it's still very much a grim reality at the epicenter even after the rest of the country sent in more than 25,000 medical workers they are still a officials they are still saying they are facing a severe shortage of medical supplies personnel as well as facilities Ashley and there are so many other consequences what are you seeing there in terms of the economy I mean we're seeing all these reports big companies like Apple warning just today that iPhone production has slowed significantly there will be a shortage around the world of iPhones the ramifications for so many sectors of the economy is huge That's right. That's a huge issue here. And we are only seeing the beginning of this. You mentioned Apple. They are warning their investors about the impact of this outbreak 
could be uh, higher or deeper than previously thought. Not surprising when you think about much of um, Apple's manufacturing is done here in China. And given the restrictions and lockdowns I just mentioned, it is very challenging for their workers or for their suppliers' workers to go back to work, to go back to their jobs. So that's why they're warning about this, uh, uh, this uh, impact on their business. Now, that's the supply side. On the demand side, Apple, of course, has a huge market here in China as well. And Apple stores, some of them have reopened. But, you know, I just walked past uh, some of them uh, a few days ago, nearly deserted. So that's the demand side. And that's just one company. When you think about this economy, which is the world's largest, uh, pretty much still shut down, actually, after that extended Lunar New Year. I think the economic fallout is uh, going to be a very big, much bigger than the, uh, uh, the previous SARS epidemic back in 2003, when the Chinese economy was much smaller and accounted for a much smaller portion of the world economy, Ashley. Yeah, and unfortunately, there's a way to go. Stephen Jiang live there for us in Beijing. Appreciate the update. Thanks so much.